So in this video, we're going to be discussing my ERV systems that are in this home. Um, bear with me because some of this is um, a work in progress and I'm in the middle of installing these air handlers uh, that will handle the air conditioning for the home. So some of this um, is, a, is sort of temporary and I'll walk through um, the parts of the ERVs, why I have two, um, the ins and outs of it. So this is one of the ERVs we have in this area of the home that covers um, the dog's room. Our, our dogs have their own room that they, they sort of live in and sleep in. Um, so it could tend to get a little smelly in there. So we decided to put an exhaust port in their room. So that'll cover, this one covers the dog room. It also covers the pantry, um, which we have an oven inside of. So if you're cooking something and you burn something in the oven, um, or even just in general, we prep food in there. You see, even if you're just cutting onions in there or something, something like that, it's going to exhaust those smells as well that are in our pantry. Um, it also handles a single powder room so, uh, or a, a single toilet, if you will. So, um, you know, if there's some smells in that powder room, it also handles that. Now, this is a 160 CFM unit, um, so that's more than enough to be able to take care of those three rooms. However, its only purpose is not just to take the smells out of those rooms. It's also going to be for bringing fresh air into our home. Now this home, and I'll give you a quick little view of how this is shaped, is up here in the attic. This whole leg of the home, this, this house is sort of L-shaped. So that whole part of the house is mainly the uh, dog's room, utility room, powder room, pantry, and the kitchen and living area, which is the, the big space over there. Um, down this wing of the home, this is the bedrooms and bathrooms. So this ERV right here is taking care of this wing of the home and it is a little bit smaller size than the one that I'll show you for the other part of the house because yes, it is just handling the exhaust of those three rooms, but it does have to provide the fresh air for this entire cavity up here on this side as well as the entire area below, kitchen, living room and everything. So. What's gonna happen here is this unit will be pulling the exhaust and the smells from those rooms, but it's providing fresh air uh, and it'll dump that into the return side of this air handler, which will then, through all this duct work that I have in the knee wall here that runs all the way down, uh, those pop out into all the different um, rooms there, like the dog room, the powder room, the pantry, the kitchen and living room have a few, and as well as some up here. So that's gonna bring fresh air into the house and provide it to this side of the home. The ERV down the other wing of the home, that's gonna do essentially the same thing. Um, and we'll talk about that one when we get over there. So some of this black piping right here is just temporary. That's kind of why it's just sort of draped on the floor here. It just doesn't look the prettiest. Um, but what I've done is pulled from the soffits to get the air out of the house and the fresh air into the house. So that's what these insulated ones are. Now, the reason they're insulated is because in the wintertime you're pulling in very cold air, potentially zero degrees, you know, depending on the outside temperature. And you don't want that sort of um, transferring into the home and you want that completely isolated um, to inside the ERV so that the ERV can handle that. It could bring in that freezing cold air, mix it with some of the air that's leaving the home and sort of, um, that way you're not bringing in zero degree temperature directly into your ductwork. It's heating it up from the air that's leaving the house um, without physically touching, it's just going through a membrane, um, a core, if you will. And I actually have a spare core here, and I could show you that. So how an ERV works is um, this has four sides to it, but two different directions of airflow. So air can flow down the core this way, and air can flow this way. And even though the air is not specifically touching, it's able to transfer its heat and moisture um, between each other. So... That's sort of how that, I'm not going to get into the very, you know, theory of how these things work and all. I just want to show you my setup and, and how I've decided to go about it. Um, so one of these is exiting the soffit that way and dumping out. And then if I go back to this door, you'll see it's a little hard. I got a lot of stuff going on here. But this one comes through here and pops out of the soffit that direction. Now the reason I had to come into this area in the garage is because you want the intake and exhaust outside to be separated by at least 10 feet or so just so you're not sucking in the air that's being blown out of the house or vice versa. So 
Um, so that's this ERV here. Um, I'm gonna walk over to the other side of the house and show you the other one. And this this upstairs area will actually be finished eventually. Um, and will be like my office and the kids playroom on the other side. So right now it's just storage with all of our stuff um, that'll get situated. So um, this is another air handler that'll cover this side of the home and that will be placed in this knee wall. And you could see the ducting runs all the way along and then that goes under the floor, pops down into each bedroom and that supplies the air conditioning and the fresh air for all of those bedrooms. Um, this duct work along the top here is actually for the ERV, which pulls from every down shoot you see is either going to a bathroom and actually in this case, this this one, I think that far one over there covers the kids' shared bathroom. Um, this one actually goes down and then under the floor and goes to another bathroom over there. And this one here goes down to the uh, master shower. This one here, which is temporary. Um, that's why I use this flex pipe. Everything's going to be hard piped, but I really wanted to get this thing going when we first moved in, so I had to just use what I could. So everything under the floor is hard piped, but just to get this connection, it's just temporarily flex. But that one's covering the toilet in the master bathroom. So this ERV here that's inside the knee wall, this is a 200 CFM unit, and it is bigger than the other 160 because even though it's covering the same amount of about square footage of the home, um, this one is handling all of our wet showers. So this is the exhaust fan for all of our showers as well as uh, some of the toilets. So the reason you want to size it larger or oversize it is because I still want, I want this thing running at 100 CFMs all the time, never shut off. That will always be bringing in fresh air into the home and pulling out the, the nasty stuff. But at the same time, when I take a shower, I want this thing to kick up and double its capacity and double its um, suction power from those bathrooms to really get that moisture out. Um, so that's why I went with the 200 CFM using it here. Now you gotta size these according to your home specifically, but what this means is that if I'm running this one all the way, all the time at 100, and the other one all the, way, all the time at 100, um, that way I'm, I'm bringing in and out 200 CFMs of air all the time in this home. Um, and then when we take a shower, this one will kick up. It'll probably go up, even though it's a 200 CFM unit, by the time you add the duct work and the restrictions, you're not gonna get 200 out of it. Um, this is actually, let me correct myself, it's 210 CFM. I'm probably getting 175 maximum out of this thing because of the duct runs and whatnot. But um, that means when it's running at 100 CFMs, when I take a shower, it's gonna kick up another 75 CFMs to help quickly remove that moisture as it's being created in the bathroom. So um, yeah, this is the setup on this one. This one does a very similar thing as far as the fresh air and exhaust. The fresh air is being pulled from the soffit there. Um, and this one is a very short exhaust run that actually just pops out the side of the house. I'm, I'll show you a view here. I'm actually up in the attic as you know and I'm looking down and this is actually the end wall of the house so it just shoots right out the side of the end wall there um, so this one works by as you could tell I explained that that top duct is where it's pulling from and then it just like the other one I plan to do is I'm gonna, this um, black tube here is where it comes out of the system with the fresh air from outside so that fresh air will eventually be hard ducted behind here and it'll run all the way down and it's going to dump into that return of that air handler which will provide fresh air to all these bedrooms and, and bathrooms um, so they work in a very similar fashion that's really the best way to do it is dumping the fresh air into your existing ductworks return side the reason you want to dump it in the return side is because that way you can double filter um, the fresh air that's coming from the outside. So this thing has a filter in itself. Um, you could upgrade it to an even, I forget the MERV level you could upgrade it to, but um, so it's already filtering there. Then we're gonna filter it again. And not only the second reason it's good to dump it into your um, return is that that way it's then gonna dish, heat up that air a little bit more, mixing with the air that's coming in from the home and distribute it through all of your existing ductwork. Now you have fresh air going to every single room that your ducts are connected to. Um, if you were gonna connect these to the supply side 
of the ductwork, maybe you just in a situation where you physically cannot connect it to your return, you're going to lose that additional filtration, but you're still going to be able to distribute it through your existing ductwork. Um, the other way that you could do these is just completely run them as a standalone system where you're not using existing ducts. And in that case, you would just have to choose where you want your fresh air to be with individual ducts. You, can run, you could run an individual one to every room, or you could just find a main um, area like uh, just bedrooms or, or maybe even just a main living room. But um, the point is getting the fresh air into the rooms that need it. So in an all spray foam house like this, I really want it everywhere in this house distributed because I do not, you know, I, I want to be able to keep that moisture levels down. I want to keep the fresh air in this house. Um, so not only am I going to have them going into the rooms downstairs, but there will be some ducts pushing uh, fresh air into this system up here. Um, so that way I can keep everything the same um, moisture levels and comfort and fresh air throughout the entire home. So that's my system. Um, I can help you design one of these systems for your specific home or situation, or at least recommend sizes and how you should go about it. Um, so reach out to me. My information is always in uh, the descriptions of my videos. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe. Tons of videos of different construction techniques and whatnot and all these different products. A lot of uh, boiler systems that I build, um, and there's videos of this entire house build from everything from bottom to top from the initial planning grading framing all in between so if you haven't checked those videos out um, give this a thumbs up and uh, with that said we'll see you guys on the next one